In this video, we're going to do just a little bit of extra work uh, to the height map here for our twig shape. And I want to do this before we actually get into the process of creating the albedo or colorizing this shape. After the previous video, I went ahead and just framed up uh, the nodes that we've been working on thus far. So for example, here you can see that we have the nodes that make up the albedo here for our ground. And I've just grouped those uh, with a frame called ground. Uh, same thing here. These are the nodes that encapsulate the albedo for our rocks, and we've just labeled these rocks. Uh, here, everything is grouped under albedo, and I've placed the albedo uh, here with the extracted maps, which also includes our normal AO and roughness. Okay, so like I said, I want to jump in and take a look at working uh, with just a little bit of extra detail on this twig. So let's come over here to the subgraph. We'll double click this to open it here into the graph workspace. And uh, what I'm going to do is come here towards the end. And so I'm just going to make a little room here. So let me just select these nodes, just move them over. And so we have this section here where I use this grunge map 002, we transform, blend, and warped it. And then we combine that back down to the original blurred shape here at, with this blend. And so it just added a little bit of extra kind of detail here. So I want to just, like I said, build upon this just a little bit more. So what I'm going to do here is come over to my library and under the noises, there's a grunge map here called grunge map 005 and I'm going to use this uh, node. So let's just left click and drag and drop this here into the graph workspace and I'll hit F here in the 2D view just to frame it up and I'm going to just make an adjustment here to the contrast. So we'll set this to be fairly high and then I'll just play around here with the balance to get something like this. So. I like to use this grunge map 005 when I'm working on wood patterns and you can see that this starts to give us some shapes that, you know, well, we could use this to, uh, you know, help us to start to build out some bark or we could also use it to uh, introduce some like cracks here in wood. A way that I'm going to further augment this is to just hit my space bar and add the transform 2D node here and I'm just going to uh, take the result of this grunge, plug it here into the transform. Now I'm going to tile this uh, horizontally. So if I hold down the control key and left mouse click and drag on one of these widget nodes, I can uniformly scale or tile this noise here on this horizontal axis. Okay, so now that we've done this, you can see when I zoom in, this does really help to build up this wood pattern type shape. And using this kind of setup here is pretty good, like I said, whenever you're working on wood. And I'm going to use it here to help introduce some of these crack lines. So right now we have some of these wavy lines here, and uh, they're all flowing in this vertical direction. So what I want to do is I want to warp or conform them to this underlying shape that we have here. So to do that, I am going to use a directional warp. So we'll hit the space bar. I'll do a search here for DIR, which uh, helps me to filter out my results. And we're gonna grab our directional warp. Let's take the uh, output of the transform 2D into the input. And then we need to create an intensity input to drive the intensity and warp angle. So what I'd like to do is just come back over to this blend and use a blurred version of this. So what I can do is just simply hit my space bar here and I'm gonna grab a blur high quality grayscale node. And we'll take uh, the results here and plug this into our blur. And then let's drop the intensity down. All right, so if we zoom in and take a look at this, you can see that uh, just having the noise that we have thus far and then blurring it, uh, we start to get some kind of non-uniform shapes here within this blurred result. And this is gonna help kind of break up the result that we're gonna get from this directional warp. Again, because some of these grayscale values are kind of non-uniform. Like you see, we have a little bright, brighter area here, a little darker and so on. Now, if you recall, if we look back here in our graph, I did already have a blur high quality grayscale and I could just use this. But if we take a look, you can see that this is more of just a uniform blur like this. And so yes, it will work, uh, but it's not gonna break up the warp as interesting as these kind of non-uniform shapes would do. So that's why I'm using a secondary blur here. Now, speaking of non-uniform, we actually have a non-uniform blur node and I'm gonna show you how that works now. So let's hit the space bar. We'll do a search for non here. Uh, and you can see that that filters out this non-uniform blur grayscale. So let's left click to create a, a copy of this node here, or an instance of this node, I should say. And we're gonna take the result of this blend and plug that into the grayscale. Now this node takes a blur map as an input. So 
you know, you could use any type of intensity uh, or any type of grayscale input for this blur map. But what I'm going to do is take the result here of this warp. So let's take the output of this warp and plug it here into the blur map input. So we'll double click the uniform, the non-uniform blur. We have a lot more parameters than we did uh, just using the regular blur high quality. So let's just lower this intensity value down. And you can see here, if I zoom in really close, we're starting to get some just different breakup. So here's the blur. You can see, you know, again, like I said, we have some just kind of non-uniform transitional gray values in here. Uh, with the non-uniform blur, uh, you can see that we get even more kind of detail within this. And we can control that by just playing around with things like our intensity, uh, anisotropy, uh, also our asymmetry. Uh, we can adjust the angle and you know adjust the samples and the blades and so on. So we can get a lot of different uh, information here. So here, uh, I'm just going to increase that intensity a little bit more. And I'm going to try to use this non-uniform blur instead of uh, just the regular blur. So for this regular blur high quality, let's just delete this guy and let's use this non-uniform version. So let's take the result of this, uh, this non-uniform blur and we'll use this as the intensity input driver. Let's double click our directional warp and here you can see what this is doing here. It's just warping those lines and you can see that they're now warping and following along this intensity input that we have. And we can also start to play around with things like our warp angle and our intensity. So let's do something like, uh, you know, just kind of play around, see what we can get with this. It's a little hard to see what we're doing right now. Uh, I just wanted to keep it kind of in this very contrasted view so you could see, you know, pretty easily what this, what this is actually doing. Okay, so we've now warped it. Uh, I actually really like what's happening here, so that's pretty cool. So now let's just integrate this down here into our node graph. So to do that, I'm just going to use another blend node. And we're going to take our directional warp here in the foreground. Let's take the result of our blend here in the background. And for the blending mode, I'm going to switch this to multiply. So now when we look at our shape, you can see that uh, now we're starting to get these crack lines here. And this is, this is actually pretty interesting. And you can see that uh, because the intensity input, which is derived from our basic shape and the noises, uh, these lines are, are falling along some of these underlying patterns below it. That just helps the overall kind of conformity or blending of these lines versus the underlying shapes. And we get a little bit of extra kind of nuanced detail by using this non-uniform blur. So now we have this in place, what I'm gonna do is just you know, fade this back here with my opacity. So we'll do something like this. Uh, now I can come in and maybe go back here to this transform and I can uh, make a few changes to this. Like for example, if I, I could scale it even more, I can move it around to get the exact kind of pattern and shape that I want. But like I said, what this is doing is just adding just a little bit more extra detail. And if we zoom in again, like I said, you can see that that, that crack line is now following along some of these underlying shapes. This crack line kind of warps around this kind of more kind of bulged area and then it bends back down in these dark areas and so on. So it provides a much more realistic look than just blending this uh, noise pattern right on top of another noise. All right, so uh, that's really all I wanted to do here uh, in, in this case was just add, like I said, just add a little bit of extra detail here with these kind of crack lines. So now what I can do is just, uh, you know, redistribute my connection lines here as we've been doing throughout this series. So I'm going to hit down, hold down the shift key, left click and drag out my connection line and just reconnect everything back like this. So now when we take a look here at our final output, you can see that we now have these crack lines that are part of the overall final shape. Uh, you know, one last thing I think I'm going to do is uh, if we take a look at this shape here where we've introduced this grunge map 004, um, I think what I'm going to do is just add a levels here and I'm going to make this connection here to this levels. And then I'm going to take this input black and just adjust it a little bit. So you can see here that what I'm doing is uh, just kind of crunching some of these values a bit. And if I zoom in, uh, you can see that, you know, I get more of this kind of fall off effect and then this kind of really bright range right here around the edge, which is going to, again, in our height map, make it look like some of these shapes are kind of curling up on the edges and so on. Uh, just intensifying that effect a little bit more. So you'll notice here that I didn't connect the levels to the rest of the node. I did this so that I could have uh, better performance or interactivity while I make my levels adjustment. So for example, if I have to make the levels adjustment and then that data has to pass downstream to the other nodes, each node has to then compute and it takes a bit time and sometimes it's not as interactive. So when I wanna test something like a little levels effect like this, I just won't connect it until I have the value that I want, then I'll pipe it into the rest of the node stream. 
So now let's take the output of this levels and plug that into the foreground uh, just to kind of further integrate everything. And now here's the kind of final shape that we're getting here. All right, so that's gonna close out this video. Like I said, I just wanted to add a little bit of extra detail here to that height. In the next video, we're gonna create the albedo color uh, for all of the twig shapes in our material.